Well, um, God gave me a voice to sing, and mm -hmm. I watched um, my dad perform in church in mm -hmm. Whitney Houston. So I said, well, if I can, you know, I can mm -hmm. do it myself. Right. So that's what made me want to do it. Right. I honestly feel like Brandy is criminally underrated, and I'm having a hard time figuring out why. Not many artists' careers are able to last 10 years, let alone 30 years, while also having a thriving acting career. Brandy gave a new possibility for the young black girls who didn't want to take on a more mature or hypersexualized image to move forward in their music careers. Talk about a timeless artist. Brandy was the first 90s it girl and has no doubt solidified herself as legendary, not only among her peers, but the entire music industry overall. In this video series, we will go through her career from her debut to present day. In the vibrant music landscape of the early 1990s, the R&B scene was undergoing a transformation. As it does every decade, the ruling divas such as Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, and Janet Jackson were on hiatus, which in time created an enticing void, a void which invited a new generation of artists to step into the spotlight and shape the era anew. Brandy is one of the first to emerge out of this crop of divas who each had a unique vibe and sound. This included the likes of Mariah Carey, Alia, Monica, Maya, Beyonce, Lauryn Hill, and so many more. This was the golden age of R&B. At the start of the decade, Brandi Norwood was a talented young singer from Mississippi looking to share her velvety voice and magnetic personality with the world, entering numerous talent shows as a way of putting herself out there. She eventually caught the attention of Atlantic Records in 1993 and her debut album, Brandy, was released on September 27, 1994. Born the daughter of gospel singer and musical director, Willie Norwood, Brandy was encouraged from a young age to pursue a career in music. At two years old, she began singing at her father's church in Midcomb, Mississippi, and by the age of four, her family relocated to Los Angeles. As a child, her fondness for Whitney Houston heightened the young songstress in becoming a recording artist one day. Brandy began performing at local talent shows as part of a youth singing group. While still attending grade school, she received her first chance to sing professionally. She signed a contract with Teaspoon Productions, contributing background vocals for fellow preteen group Immature. At 12 years old, she auditioned for Atlantic Records A&R director Daryl Williams. She didn't get the record deal offer. She went home and started practicing, working on her alto range. She returned to Williams a couple years later. She said, I went back to Daryl when I was 14 and I sang Greatest Love of All and Vision of Love for Him and Sylvia Rohn. Brandy told Billboard in 2014, of course, it was about 19 keys down from what Whitney and Mariah were singing, but I gave it my all and they signed me and the rest was a moment, my dream. She was offered a recording contract in 1993 and shortly thereafter, she began working with a variety of up and coming R&B writers and producers for her self-titled album debut, Brandy. Like many of her fans nearly 30 years later, Brandy can still remember the first time she heard her debut single, I Wanna Be Down, on the radio in the late summer of 1994, saying, I remember being at Taco Bell in the drive-thru and hearing it on the radio, and I was like, oh my god, I'm on the radio. Brandy, now 35, in the interview, recalls to Billboard, remember how DJs, they talk in the beginning and the song is playing a little bit, and then they say, here's Brandy with a new song. It was like, thank you, God. This is everything for me. And I was with my friends at Taco Bell. It felt like I belonged there. I Wanna Be Down helped introduce the then 15-year-old to the world and praised Brandy as the latest fresh face of R&B at the time, when youth was just starting to rule the airwaves. Fellow 15-year-old Alia's Age Ain't Nothing But A Number had just been released months prior. A 14-year-old upstart named Usher Raymond had just released his own self-titled debut in late August. Preteen vocal trio Immature scored a top 10 hit with the ballad Never Lie, and a 13 year old named Monica was waiting in the wings to release her debut album Miss Thing the following summer. But there was something special about Brandy from its throwback funk soul production led by then 21 year old writer producer Keith Crouch to the smoky, evocative vocals coming from its lead performer. Though Brandy grew up idolizing mezzo sopranos Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey, and even tried to score a recording contract with Atlantic's A&R director Daryl Williams at the age of 12 by auditioning with their songs, it took her a few years to embrace the subtle power of her own alto range, eventually giving her the well-deserved nickname Vocal Bible. In an interview, Brandy recalls this period of her life saying, I remember always wanting to sing higher than I could. I accepted the fact that I was an alto and did what I could and tried to perfect that as much as I could. I practiced every day and I imagined each corner of my room being a little piece of the audience. It was just great to be that inspired and have that drive. Brandy's wide-eyed innocence and songs of first crushes and heartbreak connected almost instantly and proved to be a major breakthrough for the singer. 
After signing, Brandy dropped out of Hollywood High School and was tutored privately from 10th grade on. During the early production stages of her debut on the Atlantic label, Brandy was selected for a role in the ABC sitcom Thea, portraying the 15-year-old daughter of a single mother played by Thea Vidali. Broadcast to mediocre ratings, the series ended after one season, only having 19 episodes. Brandy appreciated the cancellation of the show as she was unenthusiastic about acting at the time. Also taping caused scheduling conflicts with the recording of her album. According to Noah Wood, I wanted to sing so badly that I was miserable when I had to cancel studio time to tape. She further discussed the show's cancellation saying, when Thea was canceled, I was like, okay, I can now put all my focus into the album. Atlantic consulted relatively unknown then 21-year-old writer, producer Keith Crotch, nephew of gospel singer Andre Crotch, to work with Norwood on the bulk of the throwback funk soul production of the album. In a 2012 interview with Vibe magazine, Brandy elaborated that her collaboration with Crotch was very important for her as an artist. At the time, he was not trying to be like anyone else on the radio. He was all about his own sound. He gave her real music. He didn't give her teeny bopper records. It was age appropriate, youthful records, but it was still real music. We had a great connection. Crotch would go on to work on 50% of Brandy, setting much of the tone of the album, with four from his five tracks becoming singles. While recording her vocals with him, Brandy was inspired by several singers, citing Whitney Houston and gospel group The Clark Sisters as major inspirations, particularly on the track Moving On. However, she struggled to identify with some of Crotch's material at first, especially on Baby, whose lyrics made her afraid of not being old enough. In the early years of Brandy's career, she and her family heavily invested in keeping her church girl girl next door image alive. This helped her immensely in gaining popularity among young black teenage girls who couldn't relate to a lot of the older, more sultry R&B divas. Brandy was a breath of fresh air. While Crotch would provide the core sound of the album, Brandy also worked with the all-male R&B group Something For People on several tracks including Sunny Days, Give Me You, I Dedicate, the latter of which was later split into three interludes. Damon Thomas co-wrote I'm Yours, and produce Love Is On Your Side. A then 16-year-old Robin Thicke scored his first co-writing credit on the latter. Brandy's opening track contains the right balance of attitude and pure musicality that makes it the perfect introduction to one of R&B's newest stars. Brandy credits gospel group The Clark Sisters, along with Whitney Houston of course, for inspiring her style on the song which, which starts as a typical 90s hip-hop track before building up with church-like high notes. She said, I was inspired by Whitney Houston and gospel group The Clark Sisters and trying to do everything they were doing, the runs, the range, everything. It was a soul song, and the end of that song really shows where I got my inspiration. It's very Clark sistery. The highest charting single from Brandy on the Hot 100, Baby was initially a struggle for 16-year-old Brandy to record. She felt like the song's lyrical content leaned a little mature, eventually finding her footing while thinking of a boy she had a crush on. I absolutely love this song myself. It's one of my favorites off the album. The video filmed on a stage in Times Square in the winter of 1994 was the moment when Brandy says she felt herself starting to open up, really coming out of her shell and finding herself as a young artist. Baby went on to earn Norwood a Grammy nomination for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance the following year. She said, I remember being in the studio with Keith and hearing this track and I didn't like it at first because I was afraid I wasn't old enough. But when I started to sing it, I was thinking about the guy I liked and I started to connect. That was fun. It was a cute baby crush but I was able to pull from that feeling. Keith would say, I mean, for real, you can hear when you're just trying to do vocals and it doesn't have passion behind it. Just pull from your own life and you'll connect more. Of Brandy's four singles, Best Friend made the smallest splash after its release in June of 1995. Although it still cracked the Hot 100 Top 40, the song is dedicated to her brother, Ray J, who was originally set to join his sister for the duet on the song. When that fell through, Brandy recorded her own background vocals herself, something she says she enjoys more than singing the melody. She said, I come from church where I grew up singing a cappella, so I love playing with different notes and feeling that union with different harmonies and sounds. She went on to explain the meaning of the song, saying, that was my brother Ray J. It was supposed to be a duet. That didn't work out, but it started off that way and it had that flute and everything. It was different. I love singing in my low register, that's where I got a chance to play around with that. I love The Best Friend because I got a chance to do my own backgrounds. I come from church where I grew up singing a cappella, so I love playing with different notes and feeling that union between different harmonies and sounds. I love singing backgrounds more than I do lead. And this song was the first time 
I'd felt that feeling outside of church. I Wanna Be Down is like a sonic snapshot of 90s black youth culture. The track's divine synth work combining with Brandy's wide vocal range creates something that feels both timeless and like a perfect snapshot of R&B in the early 1990s. After the initial success of the track, an all Femme C remix featuring Queen Latifah, Yo-Yo, and MC Light came out. This collab bolstered the song's success and further cemented its spot in hip-hop and R&B history and proved that Brandy was a musical force that should never be underestimated. She said about the song, I had to be convinced that this was the right first single because I loved Best Friend so much and my lead was a challenge because I had to do it twice. I stacked my lead to sound a bit stronger. I loved the melody, but it took a while for me to get why it needed to be the first connection with the fans. It felt so good hearing it on the radio for the first time at Taco Bell. Brandy is very sentimental about this song. In an interview about the All Femme C remix, saying, I'm this kid performing with people I respect and admire and look up to. I had no idea what their verses meant, what they were saying. To share that with the new generation and the old school generation, we were all there as one. It was awesome. Sprinkled throughout Brandy's track list are three different interludes compromising one song called I Dedicate, in which Brandy takes a minute literally to shout out the people who supported her as she went from talented Southern Belle to R&B's newest It Girl. Brandy told Billboard that she wished I Dedicated was one complete song because she recorded the three different parts at different times. They were kept separate rather than stitched together. The first chunk of I Dedicate features a conversation between Brandy and producer Jeff Fuzzy on the last days of the album's recording process, and Brandy takes the time to thank all those who have either inspired her or personally helped her along the journey. Among the artists, she shouts out Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, and Brother Ray J. She said, I was upset because I wanted I Dedicate to be one full song and they broke it up. After the album came out, that's what the fans they were saying. Why can't I Dedicate be one full song? I don't know. I think that it was a little bit of a mistake. It should have been one full song. The fourth and final single to be released from Brandy, Broken Hearted, was one of three singles from the singer's debut track to crack the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. It's a typical R&B slow jam exploring regret and sadness, but has stood the test of time in part thanks to its remix the years after Brandy's release with Boys to Men member Wayne Morris. She said, the original version, I was actually on my way to Magic Mountain with some friends and I was like, yo, I don't want to come to the studio today. I just want to be a kid today. And Keith was like, no, you have to come to the studio. We're in a time crunch. You got to get this done. So I go in and because I want to go to Magic Mountain so badly, I'm telling myself, look, you're going to have to do this in one or two takes because we got to get to this amusement park. I was there for about an hour or two, but I actually liked the album's version better than the remake vocally. I was really focused on getting the right vocals so I can get to where I need to go. She went on to say, Boyz II Men was my favorite. Wayna was one of my favorite singers and we talked about doing a duet and I'm like, oh my God, we have this track for Broken Hearted Remix. Get on this. This was the one. We went in and we did it and it was a different vibe. I was a little bit more vulnerable on the track than Wayna. He was a beast of a vocalist, so I had to really come in with it. For I'm Yours, it's possible that Brandy was inspired by the 80s R&B hit maker, Anita Baker on this heartfelt slow jam as Baker was praised for her ability to deliver earth shattering ballads. But in an album packed with similar sounding tunes, I'm Yours honestly fades into the background as the album progresses. Brandy said, Damon Thomas produced I'm Yours. I love the melody and I felt like it sounded like a huge ballad at the time. I'm not trying to put it on the same level as the greatest love of all or anything, but it sounded like that kind of song for me. And Damon Thomas was a great vocal producer because he pushed me. I was trying to do my best and give it my all, especially then because I had everything to prove. Another one of my favorites, Sunny Days, is a feel-good album cut that makes the perfect soundtrack for anyone looking to reflect on everything they have on a beautiful day. In Brandy's case, however, she uses the song to reminisce on what she doesn't have, namely her ex. Brandy records performing the song outdoors on a bright day after the album's release, but since then, Sunny Days has sadly been relegated to forgotten, deep cut status. Brandy says, Sunny Days was one of those songs where I had to push myself because it was so high for me, but I loved the beat. I loved how it just felt like a hip hop track with R&B melodies and R&B verses, and I loved performing it. I remember performing it at a fair. That was a great moment. Sunshine, it was outside. We did fun choreography. I remember it like it was yesterday, but I don't think I've performed 
performed it since that day. As Long As You Are Here may arguably be the most pop leading track on Brandy, with steady hi-hat and 808 combinations that could make the song a natural fit on some of the albums of the late 90s bubblegum pop explosion, the song is a plea to a lover to work on their rocky relationship together, to not fear what comes next but to embrace it. She said, I took five or six stabs at this song. I didn't nail it the first couple times, so I had to go in and really try to get through the whole fear thing. My nerves are really bad. On Always On My Mind, Brandy does what she does best, deliver angelic vocals over a mid-tempo beat that brought a refreshing newness to R&B at the time of its release a quarter of a century ago. Its similarity to a number of other tracks on Brandy makes it more of a filler. She said, that was one of my favorite songs on the album. It was one of my favorite moments. It was backgrounds like a heavenly melody to the song. In fact, I just did a song with this amazing gospel group that Kirk Franklin produces and manages, The Walls Group. They are these unbelievably, unbelievable kids and the information they have vocally is insane. We did a song called God On My Mind and they took a bit of Always On My Mind and we kind of redid it. It was amazing to see the song live on. Clocking in at just under a minute, part two of I Dedicate is the shortest snippet of the song, along with the album's shortest track with its lyrics pretty much staying in the same dedicatory place as part three. Fun fact, all three parts of I Dedicate were sampled by Drake on Fire and Desire from his Views album, but part two is the most noticeable cameo on the rapper's track. She said about the song, I'm trying to remember if it was even a full song. No, it wasn't because I recorded it three different times and three different moments. If it was, it would already be on iTunes for you. A 17-year-old Robin Thicke co-wrote Love is on my side, this emotionally charged ballad, much to Brandy's delight. While the tribute to love contains many of the makings of then contemporary R&B classics, that is unfortunately its downfall. Brandy's sultry voice, while strong as usual, doesn't mesh well with some of the track's synth productions and almost gives the feel of two different songs stitched together. She said, it was vocally challenging. I needed to give everything to that song. I was a little bit intimidated because it was so musical and had drums and organs. It was a lot going on. I had to push myself to give it what it deserved. To see Robin doing well now and still being able to do his thing and write his own songs, it's so amazing. He was 17 writing way back then. We had some great times as artists. With a chorus of male backup singers, Brandy takes listeners to church with Give Me You, a moving ode to God and the love abundance he brings when you dedicate yourself to him. Give Me You successfully captures Brandy's message that he'll always be around, he'll never leave you, if you devote yourself to him, but musically feels like an afterthought when standing next to the other tracks. She said about this track, this feels like a past life, it's kind of awkward talking about yourself, but Give Me You, that was another gospel approach with the call and response. Part 3 of I Dedicate closes out the album and offers little in terms of both dedications and musical variety. Brandy spends most of the track repeatedly cooing, I dedicate, and I give you my voice. This song's for you. Presumably speaking to her friend God from the previous track, Give Me You. Brandy's debut yielded her four top 40 hits on the Billboard Hot 100, including three top 10s, I Wanna Be Down, Broken Hearted, and Baby, and two number ones on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs charts. The album itself was certified double platinum and spent 89 weeks on the Billboard 200 and helped Brandy net two Grammy nominations the following year, including a nod for Best New Artist. This album was far from Brandy's peak, however. In fact, it was her catalyst for growth, launching her from Round the Way Girl to teen idol status overnight. In addition to that, her acting career was starting to take off, with her starting in her own TV sitcom, Moesha. Join me for the next video where we talk about Brandy's most iconic album, perhaps, Never Say Never. Tell me your favorite songs off the album and where you were when you first heard this album. This is Dom Ronix.